This is like my good weather car, so the weather's kind of getting better. It's still five degrees out here, it's freezing, but uh, I kind of got motivation to do some stuff again. All right, so you've probably seen the thumbnail. You know what's coming. These are like my favorite things I've ever bought for this car. You're currently sat on the box of them right now. Quick explanation, the Lexus that I've got at home, that's supposed to be like my drift car. There's stock seats in it, and when you're skidding with stock seats, it's a bit shit, because you just get thrown around everywhere, and it's just like not very fun. So in my head, I was like, oh, I need two bucket seats for the Lexus. Um, but then I couldn't find anything secondhand. I was like, do I go for some real dirty ones and just like throw something in there? And I was like, actually, there's two Sparco revs in there, as you know. They're coming out, they're going in the Lexus. So then I was like, I need some new seats for the Cupra, so why not buy the seats I've always wanted? And I've done exactly that. So here is my new seats. These are my new Recaro pole positions. Brand spankers. Yeah, so the way I saw it is if I was gonna spend a couple hundred quid on like some turd bucket seats for the, the Lexus, why don't I just put that couple hundred quid towards Recaro's? And yeah, these are my new pole positions. Also, I wanna say a huge shout out to Adam Ivel, my bro. Um, he hooked me up with these. His shop, 621, is actually a dealer of Recaro and he sorted me out. So yeah, shout out to Adam. Me and him have always been bros and yeah, he's looked after me, so if you ever need any Recaros or any other stuff, this is his, uh, his Instagram, drop him a message, and I'm sure he'll hook you up. Let's pull these out. There we have it then. Cooper seats, Lexus seats. Yeah, I'm looking cool. Sat looking cool, Yaris looking even cooler. Yeah, a couple of Nardis and side mounts. Get off. Object, artboards, fit selected art, file, save as Illustrator 8, save, Roland. Want that in there. 45 millimeter. Two of them. Cut. Let's go. This is my Roland GS24. This cuts all our stickers. Now we have two Recaro stickers. Easy money. Oh yeah, also, I got a bunch of comments about this in the last video. This is my new, uh, this is my new drum kit. I used to have an electric, that's my Roland TD30, and I decided I really want an acoustic kit. So uh, this is my new Tama Superstar Hyperdrive, 20 inch bass, uh, small toms, and I got mine on Byzant Simples, and it's an absolute shred box. Do you wanna hear it? it sounds like shit in here, but I'll uh, give you a clip. I haven't tuned the toms yet, or any of the drums really. So I just got out of the box and I wanted to have a blast, so they don't sound great yet. That's my drum kit, it's very nice. Good stuff. Let's go fit some pole positions. We are mounted. And that looks legit. So we'll do a test fit. I did just think, and I can't believe I haven't thought of this sooner, but obviously the seat's gonna be different widths. My threaded holes are in a fixed position for the Sparco. So this probably isn't gonna fit, 
Um, but we'll whack it in and see how bad it is because I can just drill another hole and tap it. So that hole is in line and that hole is that far out. So I'm gonna have to re-drill another hole. I've measured it out and I've punched a hole there and I've measured this one out and punched a hole there. I just realized I don't have a drill bit because that's an M8 hole. So I need a 6.8 mil drill bit or seven. But I don't have either. It's Sunday as well, so I can't even go out and get one because everyone's shut. So we'll go get that in a minute tomorrow. But it'll be in a minute. We'll sort it out. Clem and Huck are coming over in a minute because we wanted to shoot a photo of the Cupra and do like a rolling shot for a print that we're going to sell. Because um, Clem's sort of struggling at the moment because of wedding photography and all the weddings being shut. So we said that we'd uh, we'd do a print and like split the profits and stuff like that to help him out. And then you guys get a cool print of the car. This is kind of annoying because. I was hoping to have the Recaro's fitted for the photo, but you won't really see it anyway, so... I've got to put the Sparkos back in so I can actually drive it. Alright, Sparkos back in, just about to give it a wash. Um, but before we do, I want to talk to you about... It's not my Amazon delivery, that's a new kettle. <laughs> Uh, this little thing. So this is Carly. You've seen it in another video that I've done before on the Passat. They have sponsored this video today, which is awesome because it's a pretty good product. Let's have a look how it works. So you get the adapter. It's an OBD2. So there is my OBD2 port in there. You plug it in and the light comes on. So we go on the Carly app, check for issues, and it's gonna basically scan the car. So if you ever get like a fault code up on your dash when you're driving and you've got this in your car, you just plug it in, you know what the code is straight away. All right, so it says very bad, which is probably quite likely. It goes through, you can select your engine, gives you the fault code there and what it is. So I got a Lambda sensor problem, power supply, voltage too low, that's because my battery shit's pants. If you need to like find out more, you just press search more information and then it'll come with wiki.rostech and then click on that. Possible causes, flow restricted, valve stuck. So I need to look into that, but yeah. So you get the idea, that's basically how you diagnose your car with a Carly. It's super easy. And then there's the other thing which they're meant at, which is actually coding. So you can go onto the app and you go onto features and then you can go to coding. Also another sick thing about it is the used car check thing. So if you're gonna go buy a car, just take the Carly with you and then just plug it in and it will just tell you like a load of insights. Like if you've got um, mileage issues or if there's just any dodgy shit going on, um, that used car check does that. We have a current discount code that they've set up for me for you guys, which is awesome because then I can get you this for cheaper. So if you use code BOCK123, you get 15% off the adapter. Just grab one, keep it in your car. If it ever pops up a code, then you can just diagnose it straight away. Also, the coding stuff is cool. As you saw on the Passat, I coded loads of stuff out that was really annoying. I'm gonna turn that off. Code car, yeah, do it. Done, let's see if that worked. That's done it. And you can just do some cool stuff. Audible confirmation for unlocking vehicle. Oh my God, I'm putting these on. <laughs> Thanks Carly for sponsoring this video. Thank you you guys for watching my ads and yeah, this one's a good one though. So let's clean the Cupra. We've got a photo to shoot. I'm very stoked and yeah, stuff's happening. We're doing bits. What a great day. Oh yeah. We're clean. We've got Andy here. What's going on? It actually looks really nice. It is. But it's three degrees. Are we driving? Yo. That's Wild good. one. Oh, it looks fresh. Yeah, it looks nice. good, doesn't it? Uh, what's the plan? Go shoot some photos. Yeah. Right, let's get going. Yeah, so I was supposed to fit new seats today and it kind of ended up fucking up. Oh, um, really? So if you could just Photoshop Recaro where it says Sparco, I'd appreciate that. Oh, easy, yeah. Yeah, sound. <laughs> Risparco. <laughs> Risparco. What are you doing? Like trying to create a bit of depth with it. <laughs> what was that? That accelerated. Is that a duck? <laughs> Found like a moped just passed. Peugeot Street Fighter just nipped past. I mean, two cameras. That's what they call me. <laughs> two camera cars. Oh, two cameras out again. <laughs> what are they for people who are wondering? They're Sony A7 Freeze. Two of the same one. So when I'm photographing weddings, I don't have to keep like switching lenses. Uh, so I might miss something. So it's just easier, more convenient to have two cameras. When was the last time you shot a wedding? <laughs> yeah, fucking years ago. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> pretty much why we're doing this print, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> We're doing 
rolling shots now. Um, <laughs> so Andy's driving Clem's car and Clem is just sat in the boot. So uh, this is how we do it. And then Clem's gonna drive in front and then shoot back towards me. This is how close you gotta get sometimes. <laughs> From about here. Oh, they're going to look sick. Yeah. They look cool, don't they? Yeah, they look sick. <laughs> they look real sick. Yeah, overall pretty happy. Nice. Ooh, okay. The seats are back out and I've gone to B&Q and I have a 6.8 mil drill bit, which is what you need to tap an M8 hole in there. I guess also here are the photos from the photo shoot yesterday. Um, we don't know which one to pick for the print yet, so just let us know. Comment one, two, three, or four. Um, let me know which is your favorites. But yeah, they look pretty sick. Clem always does a mint job. So I will let you guys know next video because we've got to go get them printed when they're available and where you can buy them. Lovely. this guy so that is an m8 with a 1.25 mil thread pitch and that is the same as volts to bolt in The wall of the box steel isn't that thick, so it hasn't got that much thread on it. If you know in the comments, let me know if that's safe. If not, I'll just get Dan to cut a hole and weld a captive nut in there, which I should probably do anyway, but I kind of just want to get the seats fitted, so that'll do for now. It works. Let me just get all the other holes done and we'll get the seats in. that then? Pole positions installed. Oh yeah, even with a harness up my ass that's comfy. That is so comfy. Oh, I'm in a bed. Pole positions installed. I'm very happy. Shout out to Adam, Ivel, 61, once again, for the hook up on these. These are mint. These are the best seats ever. I'm saying it. That looks so mint with pole positions in it. I know it actually isn't like a huge difference. Like a lot of you who don't know pole positions in Recaro's probably just don't really care. It's just, I've just swapped some black bucket seats for some black bucket seats. But to me, this is very cool. All we got to do now is door cards, paint the cage, paint the interior, and then it'll look like a proper cockpit in here. I did have a few more bits and bobs to do, but we're running out of time because I've got to get this car down to MWG, which is Dan's garage, because like I said in the last video, the clutch has started slipping in this. If we take it on the dyno and go for mapping, it's just gonna probably shit its pants. So I thought it'd be best to get a new clutch in whilst it's just started slipping. And I need a new cam belt and water pump and all that stuff as well. So Dan's gonna hook me up with that. So I better get this down there to him now because I'm late. So yeah, let's go see Dan. So we've got Box Cooper back in. As he said in the last video, we are doing the cam valve, the water pump, and the clutch, because the clutch is slipping. We've gone for genuine stuff. It's just better when you're doing the cam valve and the water pump as well. 
Um, box ass is just to put a stop clutch in it, so it should have a satch clutch or either, what would it be, satch or IUK in it, I yeah. thought. Mike has had to just stop, he has already started, but he had to quickly go and make a coffee, because fuck the cheeky fuck, didn't bother getting us a Starbucks. No, there's not one in there, is there? No, there's definitely not one in there. So we'll crack on and we'll film a bit as we go. Looks like engine oil. <laughs> All right, so so far we've lower arm ball joints are off, drive shafts are out. We're draining the box all on this. Bocker doesn't know this, but we're going to put fresh in it because it's minging. And we're just going to drop the box now and then do the bell housing bolts. Yeah, come on. The clutch on camera doesn't actually look that bad, but it is definitely knackered. It's not quite down to the rivets, but there's a few places where you can see where it has been slipping and it has worn through some of the grooves, like almost flush. That is an LUK one, which we have got a replacement LUK. And then the inside of the box is pretty manky. So we clean that up and bearings fucked anyway. Gearbox side of things all buttoned up. We just need to bleed the slave cylinder. It's got fresh box oil in now. So we will start doing the cam and water pump now. Covers are off now. We just need to align it all up before we take the belt off. You've got the one mark on the pulley there. I don't think you can see, which needs to line up to that dot there. So if I just turn it over by the crank pulley. The other mark is supposed to be on the flywheel, which you can see down there right on the on the gearbox you see the little inspection hole now there's a line on the flywheel which matches a little notch on the gearbox casing so what i always do is line it up there and because that's hard to see just then put a tip x mark on the actual pulley there so i still need to line that up slightly and then it's exactly the same as the other mark it's just easier to see and then when that's done we'll pull off the tensioner pull the belt off and then we'll pull the pump off No, I wouldn't have thought so, Mike. <laughs> I do apologise, Buck. I think Mike's just being a horny fuck. Cool, so we've got the fresh cam belt on. We've got the tension on this side. This side's still a bit slack because you've got to pull like the grenade pin on this. This is like a self-tensioning sort of thing rather than like your traditional spring loaded I guess just like a hydraulic damper so you basically pull that out and then I will turn it over a couple of times that I put the tension on there and then you just got to check the marks it should be good to go all right we're back huge shout out to Dan for doing the clutch and the cam belt on this he always sorts me out and he's literally the best guy if you're ever in uh, Cheltenham Gloucestershire area just hit up Dan this is Instagram and he will sort you out tell him I sent you <laughs> that looks so good um, cool, giveaway for this week. This is the winner from last video. On this video, if you wanna win one of those prints that we're doing, that's what I'm gonna give away. All you gotta do is drop a comment down below, let me know um, what your favorite print is, because you guys are gonna decide which one we get printed. Drop us a comment if you like the pole positions and what other Cooper stuff you wanna see. Comment if you liked Dan and Mikey's little uh, vlog segment. Also, I can't believe they just filmed shit for me as well, which is mint, so. Thanks Dan and Mikey, love you. Just drop a comment, anything down below, say hi, say what's up, and I'll pick you next video for the print win. Um, and that's about it. We've got loads more to do. List is never ending. That'll be in the next week's video. 
Thank you very much. Uh, shout out to Cardiff Sponsors video, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.